break for everyone. I mean, since it is online uh, class, one you can take a five minutes break. Anyway, I don't see anybody, so I'm not sure if you are really present there or not. Actually, <laughs> okay. So let me share my computer screen. <clears throat> so we are going to have a bit of a discussion on conditional relations. Okay. Now there were, you know, there there has been some discussions on this previously. Uh, what we are going to see here is. Uh, you know, the focus would be primarily on Pachayas, but not on 24 Pachayas, uh, you know, individually. I would be just providing some general discussions uh, with regard to this uh, idea of Pachaya. And uh, I'll be also looking at briefly on uh, Paricha Samupada as well, especially the 12 links of Paricha Samupada very quickly. Okay, so um, talking about the compendium of relations, that is uh, talking about uh, the, the discussion on Pachaya in Patana, uh, you have to think of these two things. One is the law of dependent arising, the other is causal relations. But it's just Samupada Naya and Patana Naya. So you need to... Um, Keep in mind these uh, two things when talking about conditional relations, okay? Because the Paticca Samupada Naya shows you the uh, both ways actually, uh, you know, uh, Anuloma and Patiloma order of uh, the relationship between cause and effect, whereas uh, in the uh, Patana, Patana Naya, you see uh, the causalities taking place. Um, how do you say it? The mu mutual relationship, mutual dependency, a mutual relationship that is taking place um, when you you know try to understand the reality as it is or the existence the phenomenal existence of the two the law of dependent arising is marked by the simple happening of a state dependent on its antecedent state as it is made clear here so it is true for anuloma exposition it is also true for patiloma exposition and you are familiar with this formula here must mean sati dang hoti, matsupade dang pajati, yadi dang avijapatya sankara, and so on. And then the opposite is, it must mean asati dang nahoti, imasa niroda, idang nirojati, right? Yeah. And then you have yadi dang avijaya. Uh, Tueva Niroda, Sankara Nirodo, Sankara Niroda, Viana Niroda. So in this way, uh, one is uh, when this is that is, with the arising of this that arises, when this is not that is not. So the causal connection is very clear as it is expressed here on its antecedent state. Okay. When there is A, there is B. When there is no A, there is no B. So it is in this way, this particular Samupada is uh, explained. And within this uh, 12 links of particular Samupada, what is made clear, as you can see uh, in the later exposition, is that it uh, should be understood that there are three periods, 12 factors, 20 modes, three connections, four divisions, three rounds and two roots. So it is said that this 12 links of Patricia Samupada or this idea of 
purchasam upada in terms of this antecedent uh, state the causal relationship in terms of uh, cause is before and then there is effect and uh, even in the patiloma order because there is no cause therefore there is no effect this theory uh, in relation to 12 nidanas should be understood with all these things you know in terms of three periods 12 factors 20 modes three connections four divisions three rounds and two roots how see here in the further exposition ignorance and conditioning activities belong to the past birth decay death belong to the future the intermediate eight to the present thus there are three periods so this is how the total factors are divided into three past present and future <laughs> so clearly here's a discussion of this 12 factors of uh samupada in relation to three lifetimes past life present life future life so there are something that is functioning as a cause you know uh, in the past life that is causing uh, that that is functioning as a cause for this present life and those factors that are functioning uh, in this present life some are regarded as effect of the past life past causes and some are regarded as causes for the future life okay so that is how you have three uh, periods 12 factors as you see them in the formula and then five causes pertaining to the past five effects to the present five causes pertaining to present and five effects to the future this we will see in the chart uh, subsequently there are 20 modes three connections and four divisions four divisions you can see actually in terms of past to present and then present uh, result present effect to present cause and then from present cause to future effect okay. 20 modes in the sense that there are five functioning as cause five as effects five cause again pertaining to present and five effects in the future three connections past to present present to present and present to future three connections the three rounds, ignorance, craving, and grasping belong to the round of passions. One part of becoming bhava, known as, known as action, and moral and immoral activities belong to the round of kamma. One part of becoming, known as renewed existence, upatti bhava, and the rest belong to the round of effects. Ignorance and craving should be understood as the two roots. Let's uh, look at the charts here. Here it is relatively uh, put in a simpler way. Three periods, past, present, and future, 12 factors, 20 modes, and four groups. So you see four groups already, one, two, three, four, right? 20 modes. Now uh, let's pay a little bit attention to this. Past cause. So there are five factors regarded as past uh, cause one two right this is normally when you talk about past life ignorance and formations and then uh, craving clinging existence also included here as past cause because they are functioning as cause for the future life okay so they are functioning as cause these three functioning as cause for present and future as well okay you see as present cause and in this group again, these two are included. One and two. It is this two. Okay. Present effects from three to seven are regarded as present effects. Vijnana, Namarupa, Sarayatana, Phasa, Vedana. Similarly, uh, with this birth, decay, and death in future future life uh, three to seven are regarded as 
future effects when this occurs. So this birth, decay, and death, these uh, are left out, right? These are only considered as uh, part of two factors and three periods. It seems that they are not uh, presented in the list of 12 modes and four groups in the discussion of cause and effect. So until bhava is, uh, you know, you can find in the discussion until bhava. Why do you think is that? Hello, teacher. <clears throat> yes. Uh, it's why one is said uh, past, present, and future. So how to understand is is the past or that real like the past that we don't see or like in the the, the moments at the past like the past of like a few hours ago we was. We want to pre uh, we, we presented a presentation. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. mean like that. Yes, yes, there are there are these two viewpoints actually. The traditional viewpoint is that it should be understood in, in terms of the actual past life, present life, and future life, three lifetimes. But then there is also the discussion that it should be understood in terms of you know past moment, present moment, and future moment. Uh, yeah, so there are these two approaches to understand this. But uh, at this moment, um, I'm talking about why these two are, you know, left out from the this uh, discussion in this uh, twenty modes and four groups. Do you see any? And do you have any thoughts with regard to this? Do you see any anything that is, you know? Uh, different not fitting or you have some opinions with regard to this that is what i'm trying to explore what i see here is that uh, when you talk about birth decay and death in the actual sense you know you are born physically you are decaying and dying right whereas in most cases here actually i think the focus is on um, a psychological aspect but then I see here Nama Rupa. You see Nama and uh, Rupa. So here, uh, that means we need to have uh, we need to pay some attention if it is really referring to your actual physical existence as Nama Rupa. You know because Rupa is mentioned here, right? Or could there be some other explanation apart from this? Uh, the Sarayatana is there, of course, but then again, uh, when you discuss about uh, Sarayatana, six sense basis, um, I think it refers to the um, inner base, more appropriately, okay, the inner base connected to six Indriyas. So, yeah, so this is the thing that uh, you know, came to my mind. Probably you can further think about it, you know, why these two are left out. Now, see here in this chart, broadly, uh, there is this discussion of cause and effect. 
Ketu and uh, Pala Vipata. Uh, passion, that is Kilesa, action, Kamma, and consequence, Vipaka. And here you see uh, Avijja and craving and uh, attachment, Avijja Tanha Upadana. I regard it as passion in this category. And then uh, Sankara and Bhava as action. And then uh, this um, Vijnana, Namarupa, Salayatana, Passa, Vedana. And Jati, Jaramarana. As consequence, Vipaka. Right? In three categories. This we have discussed. Past cause, present effect, present cause, future effect. Mm. So you see here, birth, decay, and death are included in these five. That is how it is shown here. And these five are included in birth, decay, and death, right? Yes, so basically you see here two categories with avijja and sankara you have tanha upadana and bhava with jati jara marana you have vijnana namarupa salayatana asarvedana so this is the categorization <clears throat> but in this presentation here these two are left out two roots primarily so in buddhism uh, when you talk about samsaric existence or cause of suffering cause of samsara there are basically these two roots are mentioned. One is avijja, one is tanha, right? Avijja, tanha, vasena. Due mulani cha veritapai. Avijja and tanha. Ignorance is called uh, the root from the past, extending into the present, which reaches its culmination in feeling. Craving is called the root from the present extending into the future, which reaches its culmination in decay and death. <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, um, a technical presentation of these two groups. But uh, what other things do you see when it says avijja and tanha? represent two roots of uh, our samsaric existence. These two are connected to two sides of our existence. One is cognitive aspect, cognitive sight. The other is emotive aspect, emotional aspect. Tanha represent emotional aspect. Avijja, cognitive aspect, right? <clears throat> when you replace avijja, when you remove avijja, avijja should be uh, replaced 
with panya, right? Wisdom. And then what about craving? When you remove craving, what should be present? Craving, attachment, desire. When you remove all this, when the mind is free from all these uh, negative mentalities. Peaceful. Yes. So equanimity, uh, loving kindness, compassion, and uh, sympathetic joy, equanimity, Brahma Viharas. So therefore, you see two uh, Vimuttis. One is called Panya Vimutti, the other is Chato Vimutti. Freedom of mind and uh, freedom uh, by way of wisdom. Chato Vimutti and Panya Vimutti. <laughs> and these are the 24 Parchayas. The difference Thank you, between... Yes. I have a Janya how to G H A N A, right? Janya. Just now, you, just now you mentioned that uh, Janya Vimudi is to Vimudi. And... Chato Vimudi. I said Chato Vimudi. Chato Vimudi. Okay. Thank you. No, Chato Vimutti and Panya Vimutti. But in the Chato Vimutti, I think Janas are involved. So, yes. Okay, thank you. Clear. Yes. Okay, um, let's look at this exposition talking about the difference between the two approaches. Difference between the two nayas should be understood as follows because of A arises B, because of B arises C. When there is no A, there is no B. When there is no B, there is no C. In other words, this being so, that is, this not being so, that is not. So, this is what we have, we normally discuss when talking about the 12 nidanas of Paticca Samuppada. When we say that A is related to B, in the way of coexistence, interdependence, we get an illustration of Pakhtanana. So this is what I was trying to tell you that uh, when you talk about the mutual relationship between the uh, cause and effect or between different factors uh, in a single moment of uh, existence or in several moments of existence, then you have the discussion of Pakhtanana. Furthermore, the principle of dependence this exists that comes to be. Therefore, with the arising of this that arises, the opposite process of seizing is expressed as when this does not exist, that does not come to be. With the cessation of this, that ceases. In the Abhidhamma exists, this principle is defined as the arising of effects evenly in dependence on a conjunction of conditions. So when conditions uh, you know, uh, are in place, then there is a certain effect out of that. It means nothing arises from a single cause and that nothing arises as a single effect. If in the suttas only one factor is mentioned as the condition for another, it is in order to focus on the most important condition among many others and likewise for effects. So here, uh, I think, you know, um, you see that this is expressed very clearly uh, regarding the causality that is expressed in early Buddhist text, causality of events in terms of cause and effect. First of all, the relationship is in a way linear, linear way it is presented. And uh, secondly, um, 
when uh, you know even you see following this formula of Thomas uh, Sati Dang Koti when you have this presentation of Vijapache Sankara and so on when it says when there is avijja there is sankara when there is sankara there is vijnana it does not mean to say that only when there is avijja there is sankara there is no other factors that are involved apart from avijja for the arising of sankara that is not the intention okay what it what it says is that avijja can be regarded as the main factor main cause leading factor probably most important factor among other factors that are involved in the production of sankara is it clear yes it's clear <laughs> yes so that is uh, from the point of uh, cause giving rise to effects the conclusion is that there is no single cause contributing to the arising of any kind of effects. Okay. And when it says Avijapache Sankara, it does not mean that there is just Sankara that is being produced. Okay. Sankara is the most important thing that is produced, that is, uh, that is considered as an effect of Avijja, but there are other factors also uh, there. So what it means is that there is no single effect that is produced. And this is very important, uh, I think, uh, in terms of uh, theories, uh, because uh, this reject the single cause. For example, when people say that from a single cause, everything came into existence. There is, a, there is one and only single ultimate reality. It could be in terms of God, Godhead, you know, or anything. So that is rejected. And in terms of single effect, that is also rejected. There is no single cause and single effect. There is uh, the, the, the theory is that multiple causes give rise, give rise to multiple effects. Talking about the Patana Naya, says that Patana Naya developed in the Abhidhamma literature, its purpose is not to substitute the earlier doctrine of dependent origination, but to supplement it. Yeah, so here what you see is that the Abhidhammikas came up with this Patana Naya is to further elaborate and make clear what is expressed in the early Buddhism in terms of uh, dependent origination. Primarily, the conditional relations of the Abhidhamma doctrine of conditionality are used to explain the relationship between each pair of factors in the in the twelve fold formula of dependent origination. Its purpose is not to explain the absolute origin of the series of mental and material dhammas into which our world of experience is analyzed, but to describe the uninterrupted continuity of the samsaric process. So when you, you know, find that in the 12 Nidanas, Avijja is mentioned as the first factor giving rise to Sankara, you do not think that, you know, Avijja is the main cause, the first cause giving rise to uh, our samsaric existence, all the problem in samsara then because then you might have this thought that when did this you know first uh, appearance of uh, avijja happened in me in any being right so that is why it says that uh, one of the purpose of the conditional relations patana of the 
Avidama doctrine of conditionality is to explain the relationship between each pair of factors in the 12 fold formula of dependent origination. So when you say Avidya Pacha Sankara, for example, and then also you'd find Sankara Pacha uh, Avidya, Sankara Pacha Vijana Vijana Pacha Sankara. The relationship between this these two, any two pairs. Its purpose is not to explain the absolute origin of this series of mental and material dhammas into which our world of experience is analyzed, but to describe the uninterrupted continuity of the samsaric process, uninterrupted continuity. There are three postulates which the Avidhamma doctrine of conditionality recognizes as axiomatic. So three principles. One, nothing arises without the appropriate causes and conditions. So notice this term, appropriate, appropriate causes and conditions. Not just causes and conditions, but appropriate causes and conditions. This rules out the theory of fortuitous origination, adichas samuppanna. Things happening abruptly, that is denied. The theory that rejects all principles of causality and conditionality. Adichas samuppanna, those who uphold this theory, they say that there is no causal connection. You know, anything can happen anywhere. So there is no uh, logic, no con uh, causal connections to anything. So that is denied uh, with the theory of conditionality and uh, dependent origination. Secondly, nothing arises from a single cause. It rules out all theories of single cause, eka karanavada. Their rejection means that the Abhidhamma dissociates itself from all monistic theories which seek to explain the origin of the world from a single cause. Whether this single cause is conceived as a personal God or an impersonal Godhead, it serves as a critic of all metaphysical theories which attempt to reduce the world of experience to an underlying trans-empirical principle. So this is rejected. And then thirdly, nothing arises as a single solitary phenomenon. If we elaborate on this, this should mean that on the basis of a single cause or on the basis of a multiplicity of causes or purely due to fortuitous circumstances, there can never be a single effect or a solitary phenomenon. So these are three principles uh, that this Abhidhamma doctrine of conditionality recognizes. One is nothing arises without the appropriate causes and conditions. This represent, you know, the, the coming together of multiplicity of uh, dhammas or you can say causes and conditions. And then there is no single cause, there is no single effect. It is on the rejection of these three views that the Abhidhamma doctrine of conditionality is founded. Their rejection means from a plurality of causes, a plurality of effects takes place. Applied to the Dhamma theory, this means that a multiplicity of Dhammas brings about a multiplicity of other dhamma. So this is what is expressed uh, with the theory of uh, conditional relations, pachayas, 24 pachayas. One clear conclusion that emerges from this situation is that dhammas always arise not as solitary phenomena, but as dusters. <laughs> There is no single unitary existence of anything whatsoever.
So it clearly rejects any kind of uh, so-called, you know, um, ideas of existence. So you cannot really truly, in the true sense of the term, you cannot talk about existence of anything at all. Again, you can, you know, come back to the discussion on Nagarjuna. When you cannot find anything that is existing, you cannot talk about its non-existence. This is true of both mental and material dhammas. This explains why whenever consciousness arises, together with it, there must arise at least seven mental factors, at least seven mental factors, those universal chatasikas. Together with the chitta, no psychic instance can ever occur with less than eight constituents, consciousness and its seven universal concomitants. We thus can see that even the smallest psychic unit, a moment of consciousness, turns out to be a complex correlational system. In the same way, the smallest unit of matter, called the basic octet, taka. when you talk about the basic uh, unit of matter, the smallest unit of matter, it is in the final analysis a cluster of eight material factors, namely the four great material elements and four items of dependent matter, color, order, test, and nutritive essence. None of these material factors arise singly because they are necessarily coexistent and positionally inseparable. They are necessarily coexistent and positionally inseparable. You cannot separate one from the other. They coexist and they, how do you say, they are causally connected to each other. And when all these uh, basic eight factors come together, then only you can talk about uh, existence, you know, uh, in a, in, in terms of in terms of change, changing phenomena, existence in terms of change that is that that comes to be. There are two other basic principles behind the Abhidhamma doctrine of conditionality. The first is that no mental or material Dhamma can propel itself into existence by its own power. By their very nature, Dhammas can completely devoid of Dhammas are completely devoid of own power or own sway. Dhamma Dhamma Nam Sava Savatita Bimano Patisedito Hopi. This amounts to the rejection of the principle of self-possession. The other is that. No mental or material Dhamma can be brought into being by a power external to the Dhammas either. This amounts to, to the rejection of the principle of external position. The rejection of these two theories means that Dhammas alone help, uh, help other Dhammas to arise and persist in being. So, uh, neither they, they are self-caused nor uh, caused by other. There is no self-causation, neither there is other causation. A Dhamma cannot become cause, a cause for its own existence. Also, there, there are no external factors, external dharmas, that is, you know, that, that causes uh, to arise something that is completely different from it, from the dharmas.
So finally, what it says is that Dhammas help other Dhammas to arise and persist in being. So I think what it amounts to say is that what is going on is just the, the functioning, the activity probably. Therefore, you do not talk about the existence or you know um, the identity of anything at all. Why is that? Because there is just a process that is that is taking place, a process. You cannot pinpoint, you cannot identify that it, it is either this or that. That is not going to be possible. But as soon as you identify that uh, you know uh, it is this then the question is what causes this is it self caused or other caused the nature of the relationship between causes and effects the cause should should not be understood as some kind of potential effect in other words the cause is not pregnant with the effect uh, so it says it is the idea uh, as in the Sankhya philosophy in the Sankhya philosophy you have the discussion of Prakriti and Purusha Prakriti and Purusha and uh, the potentiality of, uh, of the existence of becoming is there in the Prakriti and Purusha uh, in different situations, depending on condition, it you know, changes, all the potentialities are there. But it is not the same in uh, Buddhist theory of uh, causality. The cause is not in the effect. The effect is empty of the cause. This is explained to mean when the condition exists, there is the arising of the effect. When the condition does not exist, the effect ceases to be. Thus, the dhammas become causes by the mere fact of their existence. What this means is that nothing passes from the cause to the effect. In other words, the cause does not provide the effect. So, even though you talk about the causal relationships, the causality, the relationship between cause and effect, uh, there is nothing from the cause that is transmitted to the effect. If you say there is something from the cause that is transmitted to the effect, it seems that uh, it means that uh, the the potentiality uh, of of the effect or the essence of the effect is present in the cause. So that is not accepted. There is nothing that is transmitted from the cause to the effect. Neither they are completely, you know, separated. It is because of the cause there is effect. There are three factors involved where one dhamma is related to another dhamma. The first is the conditioning state, pachaya dhamma. The second, the conditioned state, pachaya upana dhamma. The third is the conditioning force, pachaya sati. A condition is defined as a dhamma which is helpful for the origination or existence of another dhamma related to it. This means that when a particular dhamma is activating as a condition, it will cause other dhammas connected to it to arise, or if they have already arisen, it will maintain them in existence. As we shall see in the sequel, there are some conditions which are helpful only for the existence of other dhammas. As for example, the post nascence condition, some dhammas are helpful only for the origination of other dhammas 
uh, as for example, the proximity and contiguity conditions. There are others which help uh, other dhammas in both ways to originate as well as to exist. For example, the root condition. So these are different parchayas and their roles in the maintain maintenance of the causal relationship between cause and effect. It should be noticed that the function of co causing uh, the cessation is not attributed to any dhamma. What causes the cessation? Is there any cause for the cessation? The reason for this situation is that a dhamma that arises and exists must necessarily come to cessation without the intervention, intervention of any causes or condition. So there is arising and cessation of the cause as well. without the intervention, intervention of any external cause or condition. I think this might raise a, a question. Uh, we can think about it later on, you know, we can have some discussion on this. A conditioned state, Pachayupanna Dhamma, is a Dhamma that arises or exists in dependence on condition. The conditioning force Pachyasat is that which has efficacy to bring about or accomplish an effect. The conditioning force cannot exist apart from the conditioning state. It is just as the hardness of chili, which is inherent in it and cannot exist apart from it. Yeah. So just recognizing the aspect of force in the uh, conditioned state, that's all just like recognizing the aspect of hotness in Chile. Thus the force and the state possessing the force that are not two distinct entities, yeah. And it is the same with regard to all the Pachayas actually. The Dhamma, a Dhamma can in, in fact come to possess more than one conditioning force. And that is why you have different Pachayas. A survey of the 24 conditions. Yeah, some Purejata, Indriya, Vipayutta, Ati, Avigata. So you have different uh, aspects, different, uh, you know, characteristics related to different Pachayas. In the Vidamata Sangha Vacharya Anurudhu, we find these 24 conditions arranged into six groups according to the way they structure the relations between the different kinds of dhammas. The six groups are mind and mind, mind and mind and matter. So nama and nama, nama and nama rupa, nama and rupa, rupa and nama, nama rupa and concepts and uh, mind. So panyati and uh, nama, nama and matter, nama and matter, nama rupa and nama rupa. So this is how uh, they are arranged um, in the Avidamata Sangaha. Of course, for the discussion of all these six in detail, you know, uh, we need to spend really a good amount of time and, uh, and energy to understand this. So it is a bit complex. We are not going to go into so detail. Just briefly, this is how it is presented. Probably you can actually look at the text itself because this would uh, need... Sorry, teacher, I just so confused about the mind and, you know, mind and matter. So it's, does it mean the first one is the dominant uh, to the second one? Mind and what? And the last, yes, yes, exactly this PowerPoint. You see the mind, the third one is mind and matter and the fourth one is matter and mind. So what is the difference? Is yeah. it because the first one is the dominant place? Uh, here actually the discussion is about mind and matter but then uh, uh, this should be understood in relation to uh, this 24 pachayas and they are functioning in nama and rupa okay let's look at these descriptions very quickly i think 
you should have some idea. So the first one is mind uh, for mind. Skip this uh, Pali part. In six ways, mind is conditioned for mind. How is that? Consciousness and ment uh, mental factors are immediately, uh, that immediately sees are a condition for present consciousness and mental factors by way of proximity, contiguity, absence, and disappearance. Preceding javanas are a condition for subsequent javanas by way of repetition, cognizant consciousness, and mental factors are a condition for one another by way of association. So here you see the presence of uh, a number of pachayas, sahajata, uh, chitta chadasika dhamma, anyamanyam, sampayutta vasenati, chandanama. So you have uh, anantara, samanantara, nati, vigata vasena. Anantara, pachaya, samanantara, pachaya, nati, pachaya, vigata, pachaya. consciousness and mental factors. Mental factors here refer to chetasika, right? Chitta, chetasika, that immediately sees are a condition for present consciousness and mental factors. Now you have this present moment and present, this present moment is, uh, uh, present moment represent uh, the functioning of Chitta and Chata Sikha, right? Uh, and this present Chitta and Chata Sikha, by way of proximity, contiguity, absence, disappearance, these are four Pachayas that are mentioned. This happens uh, due to the previous Chitta and Chata Sikha. So the relationship between mind for mind one moment to another moment and uh, uh, the presence and it's, it's uh, functioning as a cause for the arising of the next one in terms of this proximity, contiguity, absence and disappearance. So this represent the relationship between the two mind moments. And here you have further exposition with regard to Javanas. Preceding Javanas are a condition for subsequent Javanas by way of repetition. <laughs> so this that is why I said it will take really some time to really discuss this. Now here you, you have the idea of uh, Javana, right? You have an understanding of Javana. In the 17 moments, sub-moments, seven moments represent Javanas, right? It may swift from yeah. one to another. Right. So what happens in these Javana moments is uh, it takes these seven sub moments to identify an object. But what is said here is that preceding Javanas are a condition for subsequent Javanas by way of repetition. So what it means is that probably uh, sometimes it may happen that uh, with these seven sub moments of Javanas, you are not able to recognize an object. Therefore, you have to go through another seven sub moments. This could be one way of understanding it. I think another another way of understanding it should be that uh, every time you you uh, you know recognize an object. Uh, it is the same javanas that are repeated. But in any case, the discussion here focuses on uh, the two mind moments, the relationship between two mind moments. And this, uh, uh, the nature of the relationship is explained in terms of Proximity, contiguity, absence, and disappearance, pachayas. Mind for mind and matter. In five ways, mind is a condition for mind and matter. Five ways. Roots, jhana factors, path factors are a condition for connaissant mind and matter by way of root, etc. 
what is shown here is the relationship between mind, nama, and nama rupa. Root, um, hetu, jhana, magga. Hetu, jhana, magga. A condition for connaissant. Connaissant, mind and matter. Connaissant, the word for connaissant is sahajata. Sahajata, nama rupa. <laughs> by way of root, etc. Connescent volition is a condition for the connescent mind and matter. And as syn as synchronous volition for mind and matter born of karma, by way of karma, the mental result and aggregates are a condition for one another and for connescent matter by way of result. Hetu Jananga Magdangani Sahajata Sahajatanang Nama Rupanang Hetu Adi Vasena Sahajata Chetana Sahajatanang Nama Rupanang Nana Kanika Chetana uh, Okay, so um, now, of course, uh, here the discussion is not, you know, um, the Nama Rupa that you see your experience uh, at this stage now. The discussion here is, uh, you know, is a momentary uh, changes that happens between uh, Nama and Nama Rupa. Okay, so in terms of uh, roots, jhana factors, path factors, as condition for connaissant, sahajata, uh, nama and rupa. So I think, uh, how to say, uh, it is, it is, uh, first of all, it is talking about the momentary relationship, you know, between mind to mind and between mind to mind and matter. I think probably uh, one 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 good example would be when you talk about uh, different life lifetimes. We have discussed it when talking about Bhavanga. You have this uh, Chuti Chitta. So uh, what is predominant is this mind here, right? This moment, Chuti Chitta, uh, uh, last thought moment. And then immediately after that, you have Patisandhi Chitta. So it's still mind is the prominent factor. And after that, you have several moments of Bhavanga. So that is also actually connected to your chitta process, chitta santati, and after that only you have nama rupa. Right? And all these different karmic forces and everything is, uh, you know, should be understood in relation to this only. The relationship between these different moments in terms of Chuti Chitta, Padesandhi Chitta, Vibhanga, and then you have uh, Nama Rupa in the next slide. Okay. Mind for matter. Only in one way, is mind a condition for matter, subsequent consciousness and mental factors are a condition for uh, this preceding 
preceding material body by way of post essence. Sorry, teacher. What is um, preceding body? The same body just in previous time or more meaning? Preceding body by way of post nascence. Um, namanang, namang, rupasa, pachajata, chitta, cheta, sika, dhamma. Pachajata. Hmm. Chitta Chetta Sikadama, subsequent consciousness and mental factors. Pure Jatasa, Imasa Kayasa, Pacha Jata Vasena, the Ekada, Banamang, Rupasa Pachayo, Koti, Pacha Jata Chitta Chetta Sikadama, so Chitta and Chetta Sika that comes next, subsequently. Pure jatasa, imasa, kayasa of this body. Uh, pure jatasa, um, something that is born previously of this body. Pacha jata vasena, the ekada. Namang Rupasa Pachayoguti Rupasa Pachayoguti. A condition for the Rupa. Nama becomes a condition for the Rupa in the sense that uh, the Chitta and Chatasika that have arisen, that, uh, that, that have arisen subsequently. Has arisen uh, based on the based on the uh, the the moment that have arisen of the body. I think that is what it means here. That here, uh, what I see is that. Uh, The importance here is given on the body, I guess, because it says subsequent consciousness and mental factors, Chitta and Chattasika are conditioned for this preceding body by way of post in essence. Would it be that uh, I think I don't know. Probably it should be understood in relation to um, the the moment, uh, the seventeen moments of Chitta Chitta Sikha, uh, and one moment of Rupa. Probably, probably I think from that uh, perspective should be uh, seen. Otherwise, I don't really see what it means by preceding material body by way of post in essence. I see, teacher. I want to ask um, um Pachajada Vasena. So Vasena, what is the meaning here? It means desire or control or will mm -hmm. or something? Vasena means uh, because of, according to, due to. Here. Adverb? Yes, it is not. Uh, okay, vaso. Just put a pachajata vasena means due to. by way of, due to. Okay, thank you. Here, a yeah, by way of, yes, put here, by way of post essence. Because of post essence. Because of what is arisen later, actually, pachajata. Yeah, so probably maybe when we have uh, more time later, we, uh, we can discuss 
or because this is presented very briefly actually in Arida Mata Sangha. This is meta for mind here. Only in one way is matter a condition for mind. The six bases during the course of existence are a condition for the seven elements of consciousness. You see, uh, we need to have knowledge about all these things, seven elements and all these things, otherwise it's difficult to understand. And the five objects for the five processes of sense consciousness by way of prenescence. So relationship is explained here by way of prenescence. That is, uh, only in one way is matter a condition for mind. How matter can be a condition for mind? Six sense bases during the course of existence. So you know about six sense bases. Uh, a condition for the seven elements of consciousness. I'm not very sure what it means by seven elements of consciousness. And the five objects for the five process of sense consciousness. So you have five different types of consciousness and you have five objects. So I think it is uh, in a way very clear how mind is related, matter is related to mind is that you have this basis, this indriyas and all these things. And based on this, uh, you know, when they come in contact with external object and so on, you have different types of consciousness. So that is how your, this materiality function as a basis for a certain type of mentality to arise. So the relationship is explained in terms of pure jata vasana. So what precedes is, is this uh, physicality in the years for a certain type of mentality to arise. Concepts and mind and uh, mind for mind. concepts and mind, mind for mind. In two ways, concepts and mind and matter are conditions for mind, namely by way of object and decisive support. By way of object and decisive support. Aramana. And Aramana Upanisayu. Aramana Vasena Upanisaya Vasena. Object and support. Therein, object is sixfold as visible form, etc. Object. Decisive support is threefold, namely object decisive support, proximate, proximity decisive support, and natural decisive support. So we have objects and as explained here in three different ways of decisive support, it is connected to the object. Object decisive support, we decide a certain object. Proximity decis decisive support, object that is, you know, uh, in proximate, Approximate probably closeness or you know I don't know its um, effect or whatever its impact and natural decisive support. So naturally you are inclined to a certain object. Of them, the object itself, when it becomes prominent, serves as object decisive support. Consciousness and mental factors that immediately cease act as the proximity decisive support. The natural decisive support is of many kinds, states of lust, etc., states of faith, pleasure, pain, all such things, internal and external, as the case may be, are conditions for wholesome states. Kama to is similarly a condition for it. So I think this is relatively uh, more clear than the previous uh, points. You have your um, objects, six objects, right? For six indriyas. Out of these six objects, how you relate to these six objects? 
sometimes the object itself is prominent becomes prominent serves as an object decisive support so a certain objects are clearly very impactful to your indriyas consciousness and mental factors that immediately cease act as the proximate decisive support in other case it could be that you are having a certain type of mentality in your thought process as soon as it ceases if it is a pleasant mentality or unpleasant mentality that becomes the proximity decisive support accordingly you interact with the object you see it that way i think and the natural decisive support is that you may have a certain kind of uh, how do you say uh characteristics of your mind you develop your mind in a certain way so sometimes lust can prevail in your mind sometimes faith pleasure pain whatever it is and accordingly you interact with the object so and that is how your relationships with the object is built up as conditions for wholesome state karma affects your karma and so on mind and matter for mind and matter mind and matter is condition for mind and matter in nine ways according to circumstances namely by way of predominance connections mutuality support nutriment faculty dissociation presence and non disappearance uh this is also i think in a way uh, probably should be understood uh, clearly in the sense that uh, there is you cannot have any discussion or just the mind or just the matter it is always mind and matter and mind and matter so you talk about moment to moment or probably you talk about this life to next life the discussion differs only based on the emphasis that you put on a certain aspect either mentality or materiality so when talking about two life also when talking about chuti chitta you focus on chuti chitta uh, the last thought moment but this moment of thought is not without the matter right it is in the body you still have the body it is this chitta is not existing separately and then when you talk, talk about parisand the chitta also it is not existing separately when you say parisandhi chitta you are providing emphasis on the presence or functioning of this mind only because the physicality is not prominent yet yes uh, this is all for today that i have prepared uh, you know for this uh, topic conditional relations as you can see it is a really a difficult topic to discuss uh, we just spent a lot of time try to uh, understand from all different perspective to have a clear understanding and you need to have actually repeated discussions uh, on this this topic we just Uh, one small discussion it is not going to be clear any question or remark because this is going to be our last class actually uh, because you know next week we are going to have some presentations and after that if we have sufficient time i will be talking about um, the format of your you know format of the of the questions for your final examination you know probably i'll be uh, you know discussing some important topics i'll try to give you some ideas with regard to some important topics so that you do not feel difficult you know for the final examination
So do you want to say anything? As a final remark, probably you're not going to have so much of discussion in the last class. Everybody is keeping silent. So in that case, we need to end our class here. I hope that uh, you are all doing well with your studies and essays and you know presentations and everything. And I hope that uh, before the examination, final examination begins, you'd be able to submit your essays as well you know, to me, to others. Okay, so this is all for today. See you in the next class. Thank you for joining and bye-bye. Thank you so much, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Yeah.